Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and it's Brittany. So in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing Outre's Perfect Hairline Wig in the Style Ferris in three colors. And these are gonna be speed reviews. I'm not gonna be super in depth with each color, but I'm gonna tell you all the facts about it and how I feel about them. So if you're interested in seeing what I have to say and how I got these wigs together, then just keep on watching. Now this is from the Perfect Hairline series. This is what the lace and the pardon space looks like. It looks very good. And the lace is like a light brown color. The texture to me is kind of weird depending on the color. It's kind of yakky, but also depending on the color, it can be silkier. You have a 13 by six parting area, two combs on the right and left side. You know, the tracks on the cap, a comb in the back, adjustable straps and an elastic band it's not adjustable so when i tried the wig on this particular color is the drst hazelnut mocha that i showed you guys with key shine this texture was more on the yaki side but it still had a little bit of shine and this is 22 inches and i'm six feet tall this is what the um i think this color is vanilla cocoa melt i knew right away when i tried this on i was not gonna enjoy this color it's just it's not my kind of blonde and i don't like how they have that blonde at the bottom either i just don't like how that looks and then the last color was this ginger spice color i have the color on the screen for you guys this was more of my speed because i like the warm tones i do like a blonde but not the one that they had so the hairline needed to be tweezed so i would recommend doing that but you don't have to do that so i started with the vanilla cocoa milk color with the application this is the only one I'm going to melt. And I'm saying that in air quotes because this one was not melted all the way like I normally do when I'm just reviewing one wig. So it's not gonna be an accurate sunlight test because the lace is actually gonna be sticking up because I didn't melt it down all the way. So I did a little bit of melting with this. I did notice this particular spray is a lot less messy. I went ahead and tinted my lace with my contour. I just did not like this color blend and I know it's gonna work for some people, um, but just not me. I am very picky about my blondes. Um, I hit the top of the wig with some, with a hot comb because it was a little bit humpy. And this is a final look of the blonde. The issue I have with this one is the blonde is concentrated at the bottom like that. And this is a silkier texture. So I felt like it gave wig. It just was just, it felt like a synthetic wig to me, but I still look pretty in it. I just don't like the texture paired with this color and everything. It just gave artificial. Okay. And synthetic wigs have come a long way. So I was like, I'm not here for this. Uh, give me another color. So that's how I feel about that one. So in this particular day, it was complete overcast. So there was no sun for the sunlight test, but in low light, you can really see what the lace looks like. Again, this was not melted like I normally do. So you will see some lace sticking up, but the lace actually looked pretty good outside. I did get um, some shedding and tangling a little bit with all of them, but it wasn't that bad. So this is the hazelnut mocha color, the same one that I showed you, same color I showed you in Keyshawn, and I'm gonna be wearing it behind my hairline. So I use my L'Oreal Root Precision Pen to color the lace because if you're gonna wear it behind your hairline, you wanna make sure the lace is not gonna be seen, um, especially if you have like a thinner hairline. So I went ahead and colored my lace and then brought out my edges so I could um, go ahead and you know, flat iron my leave out. Now this particular texture of wig is not my exact texture. So I definitely had to use some heat. And if you want to do behind the hairline installs, it's so much easier if you, if you find a wig that has your hair texture. This is not my exact hair texture. Um, I would go with like the niches for my hair texture. So I took that same lace spray and I just put it at the front of my parting space and I blow dried it. Now, you can wear wigs behind your hairline without doing this, but, but because my hairline in the middle is like thinner, it just wouldn't make sense and it would hover and, you know, stick up. So I use this creamy bronze face powder from Black Radiance and I put that in my parting space. And as you can see, my parting in the front still looks very wide, but we're gonna fix that with that L'Oreal Root Precision Pen. That has been super clutch to me. I have the colors dark brown and black, but I mostly use the dark brown one. I use some wax on my leave out just so it wouldn't be sticking up because I did have some issues with that, but I did get that together. And even though you're wearing it behind your hairline, you still have to do like quite a bit of work to make sure it looks right and blends with your wig. 
Um, and I also enlisted the help of my matte black eyeshadow. So you don't have to use the L'Oreal pen. You can just use matte black eyeshadow. Both of them work. I've been using the matte black eyeshadow for years. So this is what the hazelnut mocha color looks like. Love the warm colors. It felt more yakky in its texture than the blonde one. But if you've been wearing synthetic wigs for years, you know that the blonde colors tend to have a different texture than the darker colors. So I definitely prefer that one more. And lastly, I'm also gonna be wearing uh, the ginger spice color behind my hairline. And I'm gonna be doing it as a right side part because the blonde one I wore it as a left side part. So I went ahead and used that L'Oreal pen again and colored the lace so you couldn't see it behind my hairline. And I did the same thing that I did with the previous wig. I just did it with a different um, parting space. It is kind of humpy at the top. So this is not a wig you can just throw on your head and go. It does need to be like molded and everything to look natural. Um, so what I did was everything that I did with the other wig, I just uh, put, some, put a hot comb on the roots and then defined my parting space and put my uh, pressed powder in the parting space and actually just like looking at the footage this might be the prettiest one out of all of them i love how this ginger spice color looks on me yeah so overall with ferris i have to say it's not as nice as Keyshawn, in my opinion and i bought this collection uh moniz ferris and Keyshawn, just off the strength of the ferris pictures and it turned out to not be as nice as Keyshawn, in my opinion just because it's not my texture. Certainly I didn't like the blonde one that much, but I know a lot of ladies on my channel like blondes and they want me to review more. So I definitely wanted to do that for you guys, but it's it's a no for me. But I do like the darker colors, the hazelnut mocha, the hazelnut mocha and the ginger spice color. Those are more my speed. Overall, my rating for Ferris is probably like a seven and a half, eight. The blonde one would get a lower rating just because it's not my preference and I know I wouldn't wear that one again. I did get a little bit of shedding and tangling as I said. The luster is, depending on the wig, the luster is kind of like shiny. So it's kind of silky. So I just would have preferred this to be more of a yakky texture and then I probably would have liked it more, especially with the blonde because Outre Marissa, which is similar to this color, but not the same. Outre Marissa's color, the vanilla chocolate color, is not like this but it's similar and i really like that color that i did last year so and that's also because it was a yakky texture so if you are interested in this wig i'll have it linked in the description box for you guys subscribe if you haven't yet i really appreciate you guys tuning in and i will see you guys in the next video bye guys